all, I kind of bruised the um, the garlic. Where I did that one. This one, let's see. Did your crap? So there we go. Right. Done that one. So when I bruise the garlic, I'm trying to press some of the fat, no, the oil out of the, the garlic, which just causes a separation from the skin and the flesh, so it just peels instead of fighting with it. I don't usually smash it with my um, my knife. You know, you'll see a lot of mm -hmm. chefs smash yeah, it like that. Yeah. But then it's smashed to smithereens, and I can't chop it with a very specific um, approach. So what I'm going to do is take that. I'm going to cut it like exactly like I did this shallot. I'm going to take it and cut it to the root, but not through the root. And I'm going to come back, chop it, and then slices. And then I'm going to come back, chop in little cubes. And I have a question for you. When do you chop garlic and when do you smash? Garlic. When do you use like the squeezer that you smash, or you use the knife and you smash like that? What is the difference? So, now, what's the question again? Versus when do what? you smash garlic? Right. And when do you chop garlic? What's the it seems like you smash it when you throw it in whole, no? You still chop it? No, we still I mean, like smashing, like, like into it. squeezing and or smashing, using or using the. I always tool, use the tool. It. You get a lot of juice with the uh, squeezer, don't mm -hmm. you? Get a lot of juice. Well, how much you want the juice? That's it's really more nice. intense flavor. Mm. I find the juice nasty myself. <laughs> if you smash it, you're gonna make it more into a paste instead of. Yeah. And it's gonna be more flavorful. More flavorful in which situation? Garlic bread. Uh, <laughs> well, she was quick to I get just that. Like me and <laughs> me too. Yeah. In the jar. <laughs> in the jar. So the, the 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 question is: Are you going to cook the garlic, or are you going to leave it raw? For example, we're going to leave this raw. We're going to put it in a vinaigrette, and that's it. We're never if you cook it, heat to it. Well, if you really cook it, you got to be careful because if it burns a little bit, then it's bitter. It's yeah. taste as bitter as nasty. Yeah. Really? You smash it because you're bitter. You smash it because you're extracting the flavor by smashing its flavor out. So you said it was more flavorful. Yeah. That's right. So if you're not going to be cooking it, you gotta get the flavor out of the garlic. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be cooking it, it's the heat that's going to extract the flavor from the garlic. So then you can just chop it, and you oh, don't have wow. to smash it. But I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna smash it so that it will go into our vinaigrette and we'll have that flavor. Is it because you don't want big chunks in there either? You don't want big chunks, but then you're gonna have like garlic it's the bursts. Flavor. You really want to have the, you really want that flavor to be, you know, able to mix into the rest of it. Okay. So last night we made a vinaigrette, but we just left it plain. Tonight we're gonna to add the garlic and the shallots. So it's for the for the um, the mustard. So for the French mustard-based vinaigrette, you have to start off with a good Dijon mustard that's got really a lot of flavor because you're going to be diluting that flavor with a lot of oil. So if you don't start off with a lot of flavor, it's going to be very bland. So this brand um, is a very uh, classic, like household name uh, in France, but it's a nicer of the household names, if you will. It's better than Grey Poupon? Yes, it's much better. They don't know who Grey Poupon is. <laughs> That's uh, a little one yeah. Grey Poupon? No, this has a much stronger, stronger bite to it. Yeah. And so if you go to Paris, I was telling everybody uh, last night that um, you should really visit their flagship store, which is on the, the, um, the Madeleine uh, Square, which is behind the Concord Square, which is the Champs-Élysées, uh, has the Arc de Triomphe on one end and the Concord Square on, on the other. So it's just behind the Concord Square and the Place de la Madeleine. And uh, there you can visit the store where they have like truffle, we're talking about truffles, they have like truffle mustard on tap. And if you have oh, bought wow. their crockery pot in the past, you can take the little crockery pot and they'll, you can buy the refill. So it's, a, it's really a lovely store. But that doesn't have horse water shit in there. Um, no, but, yeah. uh, but mustard seeds, pure mustard seeds, whenever you got them to a paste, are very, very, they're kind of like horse radish and then they have a, a huge bite. Okay. So this is very spicy. Like horseradish, but it's actually just um, mustard seed ground to a paste with a vinegar. So, finishing this jar off that I brought from France. Thankfully, you can find them in Whole Foods. I was able to buy another one today. Uh, we're going to be emulsifying olive oil into that. So uh, 
there's a few people in the room that know have the, the answer to the <laughs> next question. So this little quiz last oh, night. So I ask uh, the question, what is an emotion? Can anybody that wasn't here last night uh, explain what an emotion is? It's just a mixture of two things where something's... Well, some, we're waiting for that verb, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, to me, it's like if you get an emulsion, if, say, you got that garlic, you'd want it pasty to make it a true emulsion, but I don't know if that's right. Probably not. Mm, almost. You started off better than you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so an emulsion, for example, if you're whipping egg white or cream, you're emulsifying air into egg white. You're whipping okay. air into the egg white. What are we doing? We're suspending, and that's the verb. That's the We're suspending little what bubbles of one texture, of one thing, in something else that's thick enough to retain those bubbles. So here we're going to be trying to retain little bubbles of olive oil in the, the mustard. Now, this already has an emulsion of mustard seed paste and vinegar. If we were to build an emulsion on top of that pre-existing uh, emulsion, we'd have something like mayonnaise. It'd be way too thick. So we have to liquefy this before we get started. You can liquefy it with anything of a low viscosity. For example, you could add water to it. You could add uh, vinegar to it. I'm going to do the vinegar, but uh, you could also use uh, white wine, for example. That's what I, my next question was telling to me. Put some of your wine. Uh, you, you could. <laughs> so what I really want to teach you is the, is the texture. Afterwards, the flavor, you can work it out how what you prefer. So, for example, if we were to use water, of course, that would have been not quite so, so strong. So that liquefied uh, the mustard. Now we're going to start adding the, the emulsifying the oil into it. So to do that, I don't add too much too fast, because if not, you're just going to be chasing the, the oil, and it won't be suspended in it. So that's one thing. Don't add the oil too fast. Second thing, what do you notice? Getting thick. It's getting thick. But that's a result of me adding the, the oil slowly and also whisking slowly. If you whisk too fast, you're going to burst the very bubbles that you're trying to suspend inside. But you're right, it's getting much thicker as we're stacking the bubbles. Is that why there's so many calories and resin in the bowl? No, that syrupy mess that you buy in a grocery store, <laughs> it's got all kinds of conservatives and preservatives, it's because of the like glucose syrup that's inside. I thought it was oil. Well, that too, but it's got all kinds of uh, preservatives and conservatives in it. <laughs> So it's according to the flavor you're looking for, but we could add the rest of this oil if we wanted to. Of course, it would be not as, as strong, but as, as long as you've had an emulsion base, you can build upon it and go thicker and thicker and thicker. I'm going to stop there. Now, what are you looking for? You're looking for the I'm looking for that creamy the... texture. You see how even I had those lines? You can see that it's so much more thicker than what it was whenever I oh, uh, liquefied yeah. it. You yeah, see, it's, it's almost one. like I added whipped cream to it, but I haven't. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, just maybe just a little bit more. We're looking at the name of this. Yeah, Mai is how you pronounce that. M A I L L E. -L -E. It's a mutard. If you were Spanish, you'd say mutard. Day. <laughs> yeah. So I want to add. Elephants may have. What is that? Some salt. I think I am. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's just a can't hardly see because the, uh, the rain of it is so, uh... Come on, bro. Uh, Get that sophisticated oh, piece of equipment out. Thank you. So, this is... That's some salt. This is your classic base. And if you want, you can put fresh herbs in it. And we've got some shallots. And we have... This garlic needs to go as well. Me likes the garlic. I <laughs> garlic So that's got a lot of flavor. Um, I kind of scare people sometimes, but it's better to be able to add more to your salad than um, have it too strong for you because it does have pack a, a punch. But you can get your salad flavorful without uh, getting it soggy. So while we're here. Let's talk about the cheese because that's a deep, a deep subject. For shallow minds. I'm oh, sorry. For shallow minds. Well, <laughs> so the when people come to France, 
especially people that, that drink, they're really intimidated by all the wine choices and all the cheese choices. Because there's just so many, you don't always know how to pronounce the names of things. And so uh, it's, uh, it, can, it can be confusing and, and daunting. So what I like to teach people um, is, is how to categorize cheese. Basically, you have three main categories. You have hard, soft, and washed fine cheese. Sometimes people put blue cheese in its own category, but you can find hard rind blue cheese, you can find soft rind blue cheese, washed rind uh, blue cheese. So hard rind cheeses, there's two. This one was a Gouda. I went ahead and cut off the, the rind. And this one's called a Mimolette. It's originally from uh, Holland. But a Mimolette is a, is a, French, a French version of it. Um, hard rind cheeses are usually coming from the mountains, generally speaking. They're also the most expensive cheeses because they are, uh, the logistics are more difficult. And so they, they're aged for a long time up in the mountains. So the longer a cheese is babysat, the more you're going to pay for it. You've got to pay for the, the babysitting. Oh, wow. And the hard rind cheeses weigh the most, and you're buying them by weight. The uh, older they are, the more crumbly they will be, the more the sharp they will be. And for hard rind cheeses, you'll start seeing these little white dots. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Crystals in there. Those little crystals. So it's crystals of milk proteins that solidify into like little salts. Those like little sea salt crunches. Yeah, that's what. So it takes at least a year for that to happen. Wow. Wow. And so um, uh, this one has this Gouda has that. It's Mimolette. It's kind of like a really sharp uh, Parmesan. This one was labeled Old Mimolette, but uh, Old Mimolette in France. The outside of it will look like uh, the surface of the moon. It'll be really rocky. So um, this one, I didn't cut off the rind because I would have destroyed a lot of it. So you just eat down to to the rind on that one. The next category would be soft rind cheese. Uh, this is where people are most familiar with uh, French cheeses because people's first experience many times is with uh, Camembert, Camembert cheese, and Brie. Okay, for example, Brie comes from just outside of um, Paris either in the suburbs uh, called Meaux, that's where most of it comes from, or in the town where our church is, so called Melun. So the Brie is always either the Brie of Melun or the Brie de, de Meaux. Are you supposed to eat the rind on those? So all the soft rind cheeses, yes, you will okay. eat the, eat the rind. Really if it's perfect. chewable, yeah. then you, you eat you it, because it. it costs a lot of money. You know? So if you start trying to take all the rind away from all the cheeses, you've really, uh, oh, that's you're, you're really going to waste a lot, of, uh, yeah. a lot of cheese. That's it, because I was bummed out, man. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> So here we have a, uh, a, a soft rind that's very creamy. Um, so it's called Chaume in France. This one has got a, uh, it's kind of a, a knockoff name because they didn't have the real one. So they were calling it Saint uh, Cloud. Uh, Saint Nuage is what it was called in, uh, in Whole Foods. But it's a specific one called Chaume. You see it's creamier around the outside and then it gets uh, more uh, firm in the middle. Very nice one. This is a fresh goat cheese. Now, many times people think they don't like chèvre because they've only had one that's aged. Because in the past, the only ones that they would export or import into, into the States would be the ones that were aged longer because they were not so fragile. But the more they're aged, the more aggressive they are. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And so this one is going to be very creamy, very mild, and it's got some herbs on the, uh, on the outside, which makes it really nice. So if you think you're, you don't like goat cheese, you should still give it a try because um, it's, it's really creamy and, and, and very mild. The last, yeah. The last, uh, yeah, it's hard to say uh, I don't like goat cheese because there's a gazillion different varieties, all with their own flavor profiles. Seems like every time we get it, it's, it's in a plastic seal that is pretty gooey. Ah, uh, yeah, it just depends. That, I mean, it depends on how old it is, how, yeah, how, how, how aged it is, how fresh it is. I don't like the texture. I love cheese, but that stuff is like... I mean, you have to eat it in a plastic salt. You have to eat it with salt, salt, salt spinach, either. scrambled eggs, and you put you some goat cheese in there. Mm -hmm. Come on. But there's, there's those that are ashed, for example. There's lots of goat cheeses that are, that are ashed. Whenever they're ashed, it's protecting uh, the cheese from forming a rind. And so it doesn't age the same way. It has a different texture in the inside because the, the rind doesn't form because of the, of the ash but protecting. It's a rind natural? Not, not all the rinds are natural, huh? Well, some of them, like this, this next one is a washed rind cheese. So that one, the, the rind has been flavored, if you will. Usually washed rind cheeses are, um, are soaked or sponged or sprayed 
Um, it was brown. You said it was brown, so they uh, actually soak it. They actually soak it. So they either let it salt sit in there or dunking it in it and letting uh, every day for, for a month. Mm -hmm. So it could be a, a salt water. Some of them are with alcohol. So uh, like okay. there's one from uh, Champagne that um, it's about the, it's the hardest. There's one um, from Champagne that kind of forms this little sinkhole in the, the top. And traditionally they cut it in half this way and then pour some champagne in the, in the top, and they dip a little bit of their bread in the champagne as they're getting a little bit of the, <laughs> the, the cheese. But white wine cheeses many times are, um, are the stinkiest category, be oh, but, their, but their <laughs> bark is worse than their bite because they're still fairly young. Imagine if this cheese right here was mm -hmm. dipped in some kind of salt water or some type of alcohol or something for, for uh, one month every, every day. It's still fairly young, so the inside is not as flavorful as, as the rind is. Um, so that's uh, a washed rind. So what is the uh, natural age to age cheese? It's just all different. It's all different, and you'll pay more for the more it's aged, and, and the stronger or the sharper it will be, the more it's the more it's aged. So if you are nervous about this course, the the, the, the cheese, you don't have a, a big cheese uh, uh, culture or experience. Um, you know, there's lots of things that the first time you taste it. Uh, you're a little bit shocked by its taste and its texture. Something that's bad. It's just not familiar to you. Uh, so, give it a, give it a try. Being a little bit adventurous because it might develop into something that you know you're shocked by how different it is and that you that, that you enjoy. So traditionally, you're going to have this served again before the dessert with a green salad and uh, the vinaigrette. So that's uh, what we'll do. Why don't you go ahead? I'll show you uh, maybe a nice little. So just take some salad. So weird. Salad at the end. Yes. That's bizarro. We don't want no, to that's, that free salad. That's what they say. Uh, yeah. There. It's like why? Why are y'all having it before? <laughs> that's bizarro. I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> so just to clear your palate. Clear your palate for the, for dessert. Yeah. And also, if that's you have it before, you can't enjoy the main course because you're already full on the salad. Right. So what's that? That's and your main course is the main right. thing. Yeah. I don't think it's funny in English. No we're saying entree, but entree. You guys speak a little French. I'm sure being in this area, what does entree mean? Come in. Enter. Exactly right. Exactly right. Enter. Come in. Yeah. So why are we calling the main course Enter. the entrance? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of things like that. They've gotten confused. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Especially the the French Anywhere you eat in Europe. Mm -hmm. Serve the salad after the meal. It's true. It's true. So help yourself with the um, your salad, and we'll put the cheese on either end of the, the table. All right. Ooh. Man, that scared me. I started to pull my pistol out. I thought somebody <laughs> got up in here, man. So help yourself with some salad. Yeah.